Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Gamera series with Gamera vs. Zegra, the seventh film in the Gamera franchise, released in Japan in 1971, and this was the final Gamera film before Daiei, the company that made all these movies, went bankrupt. Now, there were Gamera films after this, but at that point Daiei was bought out by other companies. Now, in the 80s, Sandy Frank released an English dub of this movie, which was later riffed on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Now, I have the original Japanese version of this movie on the Gamera Legacy Collection from Mill Creek, and I have the MST3K episode on that box set right behind me. Now, even though there was technically one other Gamera film after this during the Showa era, a lot of fans consider this to be the true finale of the Showa Gamera series. Now, in my opinion, Gamera vs. Zegra is the worst film in the franchise. Now, yes, Gamera Super Monster is technically a worse movie than this, but that movie at least was kind of hilariously bad. This movie is just fucking boring. And sometimes that's the worst thing a movie can be, is fucking boring. Even watching the MST3K episode doesn't really help this movie very much. I mean, it doesn't help that I watched the original Japanese version and then I watched the MST3K episode, like, regardless of Joel and the bots, watching this movie two times in a row is actually really freaking taxing. Now, the plot of Gamera vs. Zegra is it's set at SeaWorld, and it follows these two marine biologists and their kids who get abducted by a shark-like alien called Zegra who wants to take over the Earth's oceans and subjugate mankind so mankind doesn't pollute the oceans any further. So, while on Zegra's spaceship, Zegra's right-hand woman, who turns out to be an astronaut who's under mind control, she puts the two marine biologists in sort of a trance-like state. So, the two main kids manage to escape from the spaceship with their dads, who are still in this trance-like state. So, Zegra sends his henchwoman after them. Meanwhile, Gamera comes to stop Zegra, and Zegra ends up growing to the size of Gamera because of some bullshit pseudoscience explanation about Earth's oceans apparently being able to increase his size or some shit. But yeah... I'm not too crazy about this one. Again, the biggest issue for me is the movie is just freaking boring. It's less than an hour and a half, but to be honest, it feels a lot longer than that. And another thing about this movie, and technically this isn't just a problem with this movie, this is a problem with the entirety of the Showa Gamera series up until this point, is... Each Shoha Gamera film, with the exception of maybe the first two movies, has virtually been the same story, repeated over and over again with just minor alterations, basically. Like, in each movie, Gamera, during the first fight with the other monster, is incapacitated, and then the human characters have to either wake him up, or he has to conserve energy before he comes back at the end to kill the other monster. Now, there are a lot of franchises that are accused of being overly formulaic, like, the Godzilla franchise is accused of that, and to a certain extent, that is true. The Godzilla series did get very formulaic, after a while, but not to the same extent as the Shoha Gamera films, where each film feels like a remake of the previous film. Also, the low budget of this film definitely shows, like, there's all these talks in the film about these devastating earthquakes that Zegra has caused, yet you never actually see any of this happen. You get, like, news reports and stuff, which, to an extent, you could almost argue that that's sort of an artistic choice to, like, even though these really devastating events are happening, 
the characters are just hearing about it on the news. Like, you could almost argue that that's an artistic choice, and there are movies that have done that well. Case in point, M. Night Shyamalan Signs. Leaving out all the plot holes in that movie, one thing Signs did really well is, even though it was a film about a global alien invasion, it focused on this one family in this small, isolated farmhouse where, even though it was a film dealing with a potentially apocalyptic scenario, it still was a small, isolated film. George Romero's Night of the Living Dead did the same thing, but I don't believe they didn't show these earthquakes for an artistic purpose. They didn't show these earthquakes because they didn't have the budget to show these earthquakes. Now, there are some things about the movie that are kind of hilarious, like you have these overly long sequences of Zegra's henchwoman chasing the kids throughout SeaWorld that feels like something right out of a Scooby-Doo cartoon, which might have been what they were going for because this is a kid's film. And both the henchwoman and Zegra himself are just hilariously incompetent. Like, and Zegra, he's sending this woman to kill these kids because these kids might tell people of their plans to take over the Earth. Yet Zegra outright announces his plans to take over the Earth in the beginning of the film. And then you have shit in the movie where, like, at a certain point, Zegra's henchwoman, in order to blend in, she needs to get out of her spacesuit, and she ends up stealing the bikini off this poor girl, so she's walking around in a bikini, which I didn't necessarily mind, because the actress playing the henchwoman was smoking freaking hot, but that's beside the point. And then this guy who works at SeaWorld picks her up and she says, I'm looking for these two kids. And he just drives her to SeaWorld and it's like, you don't think it's a little strange that this half-naked woman is looking for these two kids and not even giving you a reason why she's looking for these two kids and you just give her the ride to SeaWorld anyway? And I gotta point out, the two main kids are easily the most irritating kids in this entire franchise, even more so than Toshio from the first Gamera film. The fight scene between Gamera and Zegra was alright, and there is a pretty funny scene where Gamera actually plays his own theme song on Zegra's back as if he were a xylophone. So clearly the filmmakers were having fun with this, like, the movie's not even remotely meant to be taken seriously. The issue with the film is, and again, not to sound like a broken record, but it's just boring. But yeah, I really don't recommend this movie. The only thing I recommend is the MST3K episode where they make fun of this movie. But even then, it's still kind of painful to get through. So, that was my review on Gamera vs. Zegra, and bye.